Okay. <laughs> Inth roots. It's kind of weird, right? Let's say I asked you, or let's say this instead. Let's say you had to explain how to find this to somebody who had never, ever, ever seen this before in their life. Tell me what you would tell them. What times what? And this what has to be the same, right? So what times what? The key here, it's got to be multiplied by itself twice, right? And you're right, the answer would be 4 because 4 times 4. Well, what I want you to see here is that what you're really asking is 2 times. So if I told you, you know there's a lot of imaginary stuff in math, right? Mm -hmm. If there's no exponent, there's a 1. If there's no coefficient, there's a 1. You can always add a 0 on the end. What if I told you there was an imaginary little baby 2 that sat right there? Would it make sense to you why it's a 2? Yeah. Two numbers, right. It's the two values, right? Mm -hmm. So if that makes sense, what if I changed it to this? I can do that, actually. This is the third root. So this time I'm thinking... What times what? Three times. What times what times what would give me 64? Four. You're exactly right. Okay, that's the nth root. The, the reason we call it nth is because we can plug anything in for n. Okay, we can have any root here. We can say nth root. Yes, ma'am. Yep, it could be anything. It could be anything. Um, let me show you another. Let's say I asked you to find the third root. And remember, this is, be very careful because this and this are different. The first one is three times the square root. The second one is the third root. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. Okay. What if I asked you to find the third root of negative 216? Hmm. First of all, the negative's under there. What might that mean? John, is that you? Making that squeaking noise. <laughs> all right. Third root of negative 216. Tell me about the negative under there. Because whenever, whenever we did square roots, right, if I had the square root of negative 4, I couldn't have the negative. What did I do instead? Put an I, right? Why could you not have a negative under a square root? If you square a negative, it comes out positive. There's no two numbers that are exactly the same that can be multiplied to give you a negative number. But what if I'm multiplying them three times? Yeah. Sure, you can. So you don't need an I with a third root is what I'm getting at here. Does that make sense why? A negative times a negative is a times a negative is a negative. Okay. So what to the what times itself three times would give you negative two sixteen? So maybe I start thinking, okay. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 would be negative 8. What if I did the same with negative 3? Not adding, but multiplying. Twenty-seven. How about 4? 64, that's not it. How about 5? And I'm going to just change this to third power because that's the same thing. You're right. How about six? Oh, we got it. Negative six times negative six is 36. And 36 times negative six is negative 216. So this would equal negative six. Is this making sense to you? I'm trying to kind of go slow. but There is a way to plug it in the calculator, but you won't be able to use your calculators just yet. What? 
All right, so your book, the way they're going to set up some of these problems is it's going to tell you to find the nth root of A, okay? Which means if you have this, they're going to give you a value for N, they're going to give you a value for A, and you have to find what it equals. So, for example, let's say I asked you to find the nth root of A if N equals 5 and A equals negative 32. <clears throat> N is the root. So think about what that means. If I'm multiplying something by itself, five times. The number can't be that big to start with, right? Yeah. It's two. Because negative two times negative two is four, then eight, sixteen, thirty-two. Does that make sense to everybody? What, John? <laughs> Show me. I don't know how, but I know you can. You can. I told you you could. Go ahead and jump on that. Let me know when you find it. All right. <laughs> so that's nth roots. Pretty easy? Everybody okay? All right. So odd roots, odd roots, which is third root, fifth root, seventh root, ninth root, they keep the sign of the number under the root. But even roots, square root, fourth root, must be, yes, that he's right. Why are you laughing? <laughs> it must be positive under the radical, otherwise it becomes an imaginary number, okay? It's quiet in here while I'm teaching about Aaron. He's usually... All, all odd roots, they keep the sign. So if I had like the fifth root of negative 32, it's going to be negative 2. But if I had the fourth root of negative 16, this would have to be an imaginary number because of the even root here. Okay, So it needs to be positive under this radical if it's an even root, because uh, if you multiply them an even number of times, it's going to keep the sign. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about rational exponents. Ready? Yeah. Come on. Every root can be written as an exponent. Tell me what does rational mean? Does anybody know? What, John? Rational numbers can be written as a fraction. Okay. All right, so I'm going to show you, let's see. Let's say I have 12 to the two-thirds. We can change this to a radical, and here's how we do it. We take the number on the bottom, and that becomes the root. So it would be the third root of 12, and this stays my exponent. Okay, you say that now. This is called, this is called exponential form. Exponential form. This is called radical form. You have to be able to go from one to the other seamlessly to be successful in this chapter. So we're going to practice. Yay. Yay. <coughs> Y'all got that? All right, I'm going to give you several. Let's divide this page up. <coughs> um, let's do 16 to 3 halves. Let's do the 
fifth root of 11 to the 4. Let's do... <coughs> yes, sir. Yeah. And then for the last one, we'll do the third root of 30. All right, so the first column is going to be rational exponent form. It's going to be exponential form. The second column is going to be radical form. All right. David. Oh, come on. Come on, John. No, you Oh. All right, on the first one, John, write it with the radical right beside it in the second column. It's hooked on the back of the board. No, under it. No, 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 not under it. Do it, um, do it right here. That's right. That's good. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. David, come to the next one. It's a fraction. Change the form. Mm -hmm. Woo! That should be an exponent, so we'll just, here, let's do the 11. <laughs> no. Good job, Tyler. <laughs> Pick somebody for the next one. It will come next. All right, Cameron. Oh, no. <laughs> he was applauding here. No volunteers? Come on, somebody. Zai will do it. Thank you, Zai. <coughs> no, the other end, the white end. Yeah. <laughs> Boys. <laughs> Just like being at home. That's exactly what my kids say too. <coughs> yeah. Other way, other way, other way. Oh no, 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 no. You're right, you're right, you're right. I'm sorry. You're right. Ah, I'm sorry. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. All right, anybody want to do the last one? Come on, come on. Somebody come do it. Come on, David. Oh, you already went? Okay, come on, come on, come on. Hustle, 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 hustle. That ain't hustling, David. <laughs> All right, last one. Do it quickly, quickly. Make it look like an exponent. The last one, the last one, the last one. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> oh, which one are you talking about? That's, yeah, it just ain't in the right spot, but that's okay. Keep, keep going, keep going, keep going. We, we understand. Unbaked. John, thank you, David. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, guys, that volunteer. I wish I had a little piece of candy for you or something, but I have none. I owe you. I owe the three of you. Okay, thank you very much. All right, questions about changing forms? Everybody okay? One more thing to show you now, and I'll shut up and let you get started. <coughs> That's changing forms. If you're asked to evaluate, some of them are easy evaluating, okay, because they're perfect roots and you can do it from there. So, for example, if I had, let's say, um, let me find one that's easy to do, 125 to the two-thirds, okay? What you want to do first is you want to change the form. So... If I change the form here, what does it become? Two, three, three. Uh -huh. These, most of the time, are easiest. Here's the thing with it. I showed you the sunshine, so I haven't shown you that you could write it a little bit different. Um, this and this are the same thing. Okay. 
So if it's easier to take the root first, then take the root first. If it's easier to square it and then take the root, then do that. But looking at this one, 125 is a perfect third root. What number times itself three times gives you 125? Five, right? So I can simplify this part to five. And what's five to the second power? 25. That's all you have to do for that, okay? Now, they might get a little bit harder, and the only thing really is if you have a negative exponent. I promise, I promise, I keep telling you I'll be done. I'll be done after this one. Um, what if I made the exponent negative? What does a negative exponent do? You have to <coughs> rewind back to chapter two. You gotta flip it. So you might wanna make a note, negative, it does. At negative exponents, flip. You can't see? You sure? <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is flip it. Now change the form. What's 9 to the 1 half written with a radical? What goes on the root? 2. 2. What's the second root of nine? Second root is a square root, so it's three, that's right. Y'all are not 